Okay, it's one o'clock. Um, it's May 4th. We're in the commission room at 423 North 5th Street. Um, I'd call up autocratic to order. Uh, would everybody join me in the questions? <laughs> Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any public comments? Seeing none, um, has everybody had a chance to read the, meeting, the minutes from the last meeting? I have. Yes. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept it. Moved by Commissioner Knoll, second. seconded by Commissioner Quinn. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, passes to the uh, Commissioner, comments and committee reports. Casey, you want to go first? Um, yes, I don't have a lot of Commissioner comments. Um, we finished up county government uh, month in April, which was fun. We had um, three winners of the coloring contest. Um, and those will be posted later this week with their photos and the pictures of them. Thank you for everyone that participated. Um, I thought that our county employees spotlights and um, department spotlights turned out really good and showed shows showcases the folks within the county that are doing um, an awesome job for us. So now I'm just looking forward to getting into the budget process um, and working with the other cities in Atchison County to come up with an interlocal agreement for the sales tax um, issues. Um, so that's kind of what's been at the forefront of, of what I've been working on. No, I, I don't have anything today. I'm gonna to turn my comments over to Wes Lander, emergency management. Give us an update on COVID numbers in the, city, the county of Atchison. <clears throat> um, yes, so uh, the health department released their numbers yesterday. And I don't have that in front of me. Hold on just one second. Nothing like being put on the spot, right, Wes? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite ready, but uh, just a second here. I will have it. <clears throat> Why that's... Holding, oh, I don't have internet. That's why I can't find it. Um, sorry. So uh, Ashton County now has the P1 variant um, located within our county. Um, what that means um, from the release that was, was released yesterday is that uh, it, the P1 variant impacts effectiveness of antibody therapy that the hospitals use when they're treating patients that are um, hospitalized for having that. Um, it also reduces the protection that a person has after they've either had the virus or they've had the vaccination. So it's the vaccination or having the virus is less effective um, towards the P1 variant than it is the normal coronavirus that we're experiencing right now for this pandemic. Um, <clears throat> also, cases are being closely monitored by KDHE that has um, the, uh, people that have the P1 variant virus. And then there's more information on KDHE's website um, at kdhe.com and then .gov and then download the, the COVID link and you'll be able to see all the information they have. There's not a lot right now on, on the variant. There's only around 2,500 to 3,500 cases in the U.S. that have this um, variant. So there's not a lot of information, but they're quickly going through it to figure it out. Um, Lori was going to try and get on here today, but she was um, tied up to where she couldn't speak on this, and that's why I get to be the one to do it. Um, the cases in the county. I have it pulled up if you want. Awesome. Go ahead, please. Yep. 21 <laughs> active cases and two currently hospitalized. Correct. <clears throat> and one of those 20 some cases is the P1 variant. So only one case at this time. Oh, we'd still recommend wearing masks. Uh, oh, yes, <laughs> strongly recommend uh, wearing a mask, social distancing, and washing your hands. We've been saying that all along. I noticed that we have some lines here at the courthouse because of the, the property taxes being due this week, uh, Monday. And I noticed that everybody was, even though it's not required, everybody was wearing a mask. 
So it's nice to see citizens so good here. Oh, it makes a lot of difference. Anything else, boss? That's all I have right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good business before the board. Joe Snyder, road superintendent. Good afternoon. Uh, today, I uh, would like to uh, bring up Vance Brothers, uh, Chip and Seal, for the amount of $525,754.24, the PO, for 19 and a half miles of Chip and Seal in various locations in the county. I've looked through the information and it looks good to me. Just looking to, uh, I would, to get this okayed. Excuse me. <clears throat> Any discussion uh, or questions? I think we might let everybody know that we all met with Road and Bridge and three commissioners and we selected the most priority roads. Um, we thought we could get done this year. And um, I think this is a good investment. It's about, you said 20 miles. Yeah, so it'll be, it'll be a big investment uh, in what we're going to accomplish this summer. So the chair would entertain a motion to uh, approve a purchase order for Vance Brothers for $525,754.24. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by second. Commissioner Quinn, seconded by Commissioner Null. Discussion. I'd like to point out uh, to the public that we've been doing this chip and seal ourselves forever. This is, we're going to try something new. We're going to have some, you know, we're, we're letting another entity do this. In the meantime, our employees can be staying on the gravel roads, uh, fixing other roads besides the priority roads, uh, you know, and mowing and taking care of the things that have been neglected for lack of, you know, an amount, uh, enough crew to take care of it. So we're trying something different. Hopefully that this will get us caught up on a lot of projects. Uh, and I just want the public to know that, you know, we're, we're working on it. We're trying something different. And yeah. in the, if I may say something in the, in the future, you know, if we can get ahead this year, uh, we would like to go back to trying to do it ourselves if it works out. So you know, maybe a year or two of having this subbed out, if you would say, will help us gain to where we can get more than 20 miles a year. There's, and that's our objective is to try to get more and do more quality work than what we've done in the past. I would just echo um, Eric and just give kudos to Joe for identifying the needs that we have in the road and bridge department and understanding the strengths that we currently have in our employees and knowing that um, outsourcing at this moment for the chip and seal is the best decision for the county and to uh, have 20 miles of several roads completed will be a step in the right direction. So um, also one thing I know that I've gotten inquiries about was the 286 project. Um, we should know something mid-May or sometime in May um, about whether or not we were awarded that. And even if we are unsuccessful, um, we do realize it will be a priority still and we will have to look at other funding sources. So just wanted to uh, mention that. Also, uh, Joe, while you're on here, um, we had a couple residents in the county join our meeting. Uh, one stopped in, she had to go and another gentleman sitting here. When we were talking about the 286 overlay project, we identified um, a couple, can you, sorry, can you turn that down a little bit? It's like echoing my ear. Um, so we had identified a couple tubes that would need to be replaced. Um, yeah. I know the other ones just needed cleaned out or extended, but the, the two that we identified or the few that we identified were one of them, was one of them by Sheets Locker Plant? There's one west of Sheets and one east of sheets we need to do some work on. 
Okay. Yep. And th those were the two that they uh, were inquiring about because previous um, folks in the road and bridge had, had been out and discussed things with them. And I think they just keep deteriorating. And so just kind of wanting to understand that. And the, the one east over the hill towards John Deere, uh, we've got a dig safe going right now. As soon as we can, we need to put a, a driveway tube in at a residence so that we can run our water off the side of the road instead of it running down the road. I think everybody thinks it's actually the culverts is bad, but it's just uh, poor drainage. And the other one uh, there by Estes, the one that's got the big dip in it, uh, as soon as we find out for sure which way we're going, we're gonna have to run a study on it, but we're gonna have to do something about it. It's one of the worst ones in there and try to get it replaced. And there's, there's another one on West by Osage that we've got to do a little bit of work to you know, they all probably could use a lot of work, but uh, due to the situation we have, we're going to do the best we can to uh, solve our problems with the, with the money we have to use for the funds. Well, you, you were talking about the one right there, the east of Mr. Norris's place, correct? Yes, yes. There's the one that's right in the middle of the two that you're talking about, yes, this is Norris's is in Linda Crossland's uh, property. And uh, they worked on that many years ago and Yuri rigged it in there. And anyhow, they concreted it over by putting a tube through the smell of the, of the old tube that was in there. And now the water has ate a big hole out there and it's coming back to the south underneath there so you've got to look at that one also or you're going to be in big trouble so is it is it eight the hole out on your side larry or is it no it's on linda's side where she plumbed her where they plumbed her pond right into the to the uh culvert right i guess that's they right. didn't they probably didn't allow any place for the ditch water to run in no, nope. Okay. All right. I will make note of that. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. So next, we have a purchase order for a 10 foot rotary mower uh, from Heritage Tractor. It's a 10 footer, like I said, we'll be able to run two now. We've got the other one fixed in the amount of $17,500. And what I'm trying to do is get it to where we get our roadsides mowed in a much timely manner than we have in the past. It's, this is just a, another avenue for us to do, hopefully a little bit better job of, of uh, maintaining our roadsides. So the chair would entertain a motion to approve a purchase order to Heritage Tractor for $17,500. Do so I have a motion? Second. Moved by Commissioner Flynn. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Knoll. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three is zero. And then the, the last would be the uh, we have the sealed bid opening for the microsurfaging project, which is uh, three miles from 286 at uh, Highway 73 to Graham Road West. Do I have two bids here for you? The first bid is from Vance Brothers. Sorry. 
So I have a page for the microsurfacing project 286th road. I'm showing a project total of $126,057.60. And then I have another page. So the description of work for the microsurfacing by the square yard is one LS. So that would be at $3,900. And then the setup traffic control would be $6,420. And then you're looking at the, the actual project is 42,240 SY at $2.74, which is a grand total of $115,000. $737.60, which brings it to that grand total of that This one is from pavement management. And this one, <coughs> it looks like the rate was like for the mobil mobilization is 13.975 or 13,000. I'm not understanding how to read these. How about the grand total is $149,952. That's good. Yeah. I'm like, I know you're good. There, that, that's good. <clears throat> you're, you're fine. And at, at this point, uh, I think we need to uh, look over everything and make sure everything is the way we think it needs to be and readdress this Tuesday. Uh, does anybody have any questions or? Did you want to explain a little bit about what that three mile set? Do you want to explain that we chose it just for high traffic in the test area? Well, what it is, is this is a, an option that uh, I was introduced to. Charlie and I, the foreman, we went over by Platte City and we looked at the roads that they had done this to. And we, we saw the worst to the best of it. And we felt like it was worth a trial. We came to the commission. The commission decided that we 286 would be a good good road to try it on. Uh, we could go, we had to pick three miles west of Lancaster to Eppingham to Hansis Corner. And we chose the west three miles. And we're doing what we can to prepare the road for them to come in and micro seal and uh, give it a shot and see if it's, it's something that uh, as an alternative to what we've been doing that may help us out in the long run, get us some longevity in our road before they get to the point where we have to redo every road we have. It's just a, another step in, in trying, trying something a little different to, to see if we can get some longevity out of what's left of our roads before we can hopefully stave off uh, a lot of milling and, and uh, resurfacing and everything. Thank you. Do you have a comment? Yes. May I ask a question on their, uh, I don't know your last name, Joe. I hope you don't. That's fine. Call, calling you by your first name, I'm sorry. Is there any way on these roads that you can take these shoulders and get them graded back down so you're, so like 286 for the gravel roads or anything, none of this water is running to the ditch. It's running to the side of the road. And that's what is coming underneath the road and coming back up and tearing up everything. I agree with you 100%, Larry. If all of our problems, all of our problems are drainage. So, right. Right. so, so what we're trying to do is we're gonna work on the roads this year that are on our, on our list that was uh, agreed upon by the commission and, and me and everybody involved and get them the best we can. And where that takes 
uh, knocking that lip off, we're going to. Uh, and I know 286 is horrible. Some of that, and we're going to have to haul some of that off. I wish we could just roll it off, but well, I don't, you, you know. Some of that or my place, you don't have to go very far. Just jump <laughs> down there for me. <laughs> but uh, no, we understand that. And that's most of our problems are drainage. Right. And it's been it's been neglected not for for years just because I feel like we probably haven't had the the number of people or employees to get everything done we can. Yeah. So that's that's one of our we've started on some of our gravel roads. Last week we went to River Road and we pulled a ditch and and pulled it up the middle of the road to get the water off one side. So it's going to take us a while, but you're exactly right. That is a problem. And we're going to address it as soon as we can. Well, one one question I'd like to ask: these uh, operators that run these mortar graders, do they have any uh, instructions how to to actually grade a road instead of grading it flat? Yeah, we went through schooling uh, ten days ago. And I've been trying to get out. I was out with the guy there last week on River Road, and we pulled all that to the middle of the road to try to get some crown in the road. Uh, we went back and bladed it again yesterday, I believe, before it rained. But yes, we are attempting to do our best to get the crown back in the road. Well, I tell you what, most people don't know what a crown is in there. And actually, if the road is not marked or anything, that's the way a person tells which side of the road you're on is <laughs> by the crown. But most people don't know what a crown is in there. And if you're doing that, sir, I'd like to take my hat off. I mean, I'll put it back on and take it <laughs> off again for, well, for doing that, seriously. This is this is what we're trying to do, Larry. You know, and, and you understand it. Uh, you don't become a blade operator in a week or a day or a year. No. You no. know, it takes it takes a long time and and uh, we're being, we're giving these guys a shot. And uh, what I've seen so far, I'm liking, but we've got a long road to hoe. So uh, we're doing our best. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Joe, was that about three years ago? I think it was on 286 where I seen you pulling, uh, the road crew was pulling that off and bringing it to the center of 286 and actually loading it up. And I was amazed. You wouldn't think that that little hump off the side would create truckload after truckload of, of dirt that yeah. we were having to get out of there. And I, I don't know how much at that time you got, uh, the road bridge got actually hauled off, but it didn't make a heck of a difference. Well, and, and like, like Larry stated, it's a fact. We need to do it on, on every one of our roads. Uh, we have went in and done some work at Lancaster. You know, it's part of it. And we've got to go back and we're going to pull that little edge off of it before we, we get it chip sealed. We've got a tube we've got to put in, but he, he's correct. Everybody knows that's why the edge of the road's gone. Uh, it's just getting the time and, and the people in the right place to get it done. Well, is it possible that uh, uh, the people along 286 road or whatever road that you're doing this on can buy a truckload of that or get just take it what is in front of them or whatever like that, or to help get rid of it, or the excess well, dirt. I hadn't really ever thought about it, Larry, to be quite honest. Uh, we have in the past had people who wanted it, and just before I it was in a position I am now, and we piled it on their place. Uh, we can always use some pretty good dirt ourselves, too, if we don't have to travel too far. Well, so, but... Yeah, if, I suppose if we're doing it and uh, if the commissioners don't have an objection, objection to it, that's something we could look at. I would be willing to take about uh, six loads with no problem, if not more. I think it'll, that'll have to be kind of your call, like probably at the time, I mean, without having a discussion about it, but how far we're hauling it, and how much demand there is and how much there will be available, you know. Uh, I could yeah, see right here at the west edge of town, if everybody wanted to load there, there wouldn't be enough close enough to do all of that. But, you know, that's well, and it, 
I mean, the easiest way to do it, which would be the most unpopular, is just go along there and roll it off. But then <laughs> not everybody's going to be thrilled with that either. So, uh, I we'll, think we'll, have, we'll, pardon me. I think we should put it on a workshop discussion. Okay, sounds That's great. Question about it. We can we can put that on for next week. <clears throat> okay. Anything else today, Joe? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Donald Bratton, Atchison Juneteenth budget, 2022 budget request. Yes. Another year. Another year. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to represent Juneteenth. What we're going to do this year, we're going to have it one day. And that is due to the fact that we are going to be COVID conscious. Okay, we're only going to eat from three o'clock to seven o'clock. We're going to have our usual Sunday service that Saturday morning from 11 until one. At one, we'll have our opening. So then we're going to put everything into one day this year. And next year, hopefully, we can go back to the two days, but just for safety reasons. And so ultimately, that is our essential goal the safety of our community. That, that is our essential thing. I want to emphasize that and emphasize that because everybody's aware of COVID and how it's just wreaking havoc. And we're not out in the woods here. I know a lot of places in Kansas City, like an uncle down there has a restaurant who said that they can sit out on the deck without the mask. And there's a lot of open masks down there and you like to wear the mask in their mandate. And like I said, we're still going to recommend the mask. We're going to ask for the social distancing. And I just want you to be aware of that. But what we do is we're going to have the Sunday service Saturday morning from 11 to 1. So we'll have our opening right up here at 7th and L at the park, Allerton Park. And I don't know how many people would expect that we are going to be practicing the social distancing realizing that the COVID, we're not out of the woods yet, let's just all admit it. And it's still the fact that we don't have any lives. So we're gonna be so very careful. That's why we cut back this one day. And so we're just asking for you to help us with our budgeting because everything is free. That's what we do. That's just how we roll. Nobody's getting paid. It isn't like we have an administrator to do this or to do that. This is just out of an act of love for our community. So we'd ask that you consider us in your budget that we might continue to do this as long as we can. And thank you so much for this opportunity. I've got a question and it just occurred to me. I haven't put any more thought into it, but would this be an opportunity to maybe have a clinic at your COVID clinic? Well, actually, yeah. I mean, I don't know availability of of who could be given it, or but I mean, I was just thinking of it would be an excellent outreach. I mean, I commend you on your uh, consideration of of having it for the one day. It's been the last year has been people rearranging things to make it work. It sounds yes. like you're doing that very much. Yes. I just had that thought. It might be an opportunity to get to your community mm -hmm. to uh, and. That would have to be something, you know. Yes, Mr. Noel, are you speaking about vaccines? Yes, okay. for a COVID clinic, yes. Yeah. Well, no, we contacted the EMS and they haven't contacted the fact they said that they would be there. So what an excellent idea, like to call, call them back and see if maybe that's available. For well, I, you would probably be either through the community uh, uh, health department or the county health department, you know, if, uh, you know, if they're, it could be through CVS or through, through Walmart. You know, I just uh, I just had that thought that that could be something that that's Excellent. out there Excellent. as a service. So I don't know if if you want to pursue that or do you want well, someone else to? It's something that can take back to the board that we might be able to get something together. I think it's an excellent idea. Okay, that's just something that, well, as you were talking there, I thought this would be a, a good opportunity, possibly. So uh, sure. if you want to contact me, I can work with you on that. Okay, would, would you? Yes. I was going to say, who would I contact? Yeah. You just read my mind. Well, Mr. Brad, just the 
Eric's on our Northeast Kansas Health Board. Okay. So he's got a lot of good contacts. So okay. if he offered to help you, okay. he can get it done. If it, if it can get done. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll see if uh, if we could find someone that's willing to, and that's on a Saturday, you did say? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh -huh. June the 12th. June the 12th. Get that? I don't have the shores, and this is from 17. I don't want to give you the old ones, but I think you've been up to our June 24th. I don't know if all of you have, but it's, it's really everybody enjoys it. It's, it's really an act of love. And our motto is unity in the community. That's what we're trying to achieve. Next question. Um, are there ways that the county commission can support your efforts with um, outside of the monetary donation they've done in the past? Yeah, or sure. we have volunteers. It's all volunteer work. Volunteer. And then, um, from the chairman on down, nobody's getting paid. It's an act of love. Absolutely. Would how would we go about volunteering for that? Would we contact you? You could contact me, or you could contact our chairperson, Laquita. Laquita Clue. Uh, do okay. you know her? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Jack, I know I've seen you up there before. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It's one of my go to events. Thank you for your support. Well, thank you for this time. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank it's you. good to see I really you. Appreciate this. Michelle, I think it's... Yeah, she got back into the office. Oh, okay. Well, I, didn't... <laughs> I got confused last week and I couldn't get on the Facebook. Uh, I couldn't get on to Zoom. Mr. Brett, here's my numbers on there. So I will be in to you. you bet. We'll see. I mean, I, I hope we can find uh, somebody that's available to do it but, yeah. and a place. But okay. well, like I said, I just appreciate all of your support. I know all of you support us. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, Jim Rollins of Atchison Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you for today. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for coming in, Larry. You if bet. I can help out or anything like that, I, I don't know what I do, but anyhow, I'll try and help you. Yeah. If you need something. If you want to put in an application at Road and Bridge, I think Joe's <laughs> out there till five. <laughs> out where? Road and Bridge. You can go put your application in. That'd be great. You think they should take it, take care of an old man? That, that, <clears throat> they probably wouldn't his, like his ideas all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very, very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Have a good okay. day. Okay. Jim Rowland, you're on. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, Jim Rowland with the chamber. The Atchison Chamber of Commerce uh, coming to you for a 2020 budget consideration. Um, we we typically get a, uh, a stipend for tourism, which we uh, are obviously asking for again. Since our last conversation last year, we've, we have written and are beginning to execute on a strategic plan for tourism. That's going quite well, given the fact that we're in a global pandemic, but we are implementing and executing, really working with our um, tourism assets, you know, attempting to get a little bit more collaboration on their part so that we are all operating from the same page, which is a tall task, but uh, one that's uh, extraordinarily important if we're going to uh, really move the needle as it relates to tourism. The second piece of uh, our request is for the new Main Street uh, program that we'll be implementing and executing over the next several years. Um, Main Street at its core is a, it has at its notion that downtown districts are the heart of any community. And they establish four pillars by which you achieve that, a framework, a structure. Those are for our organization, design, promotion, and economic vitality. Economic vitality really speaks to economic development. And as all of you know, you know, small businesses in smaller communities are really the lifeblood of our community. So the goal is to create a, you know, a sustainable local economy that can thrive for a long period of time. One of the things that we'll be addressing and dealing with is really looking to uh, build a entrepreneurial ecosystem 
You know, there are pieces of that that exist throughout the community, but really trying to identify and uh, make a more formal relationship with those entities to, to assist, to nurture, to strengthen, you know, the opportunity for small businesses to get created and also those that are in existence, hopefully to um, scale and grow in our community. As you know, we, we were recently awarded, uh, it's been, the Kansas program has been dormant. We have sat through uh, the national conference it was a couple of weeks ago, which was fascinating. We've gone through our new community training, uh, which was equally good. And uh, over this next year, over 2021, we'll be laying the foundation, you know, building, you know, the back, back office function uh, to make sure that we're ready to, to begin to execute on a bigger scale. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions? Um, I would just curious, is there specifics that, that the contribution from the county help with, um, with tourism or the Main Street program, or that's just kind of a good number that they've asked for in the past and you stuck with it um, for the yeah, the, yeah, the number for tourism has been a, uh, a consistent number, I believe, over a period of time. And it obviously, uh, it bolsters our ability to do uh, the outreach. I mean, we are executing a digital strategy that's paying dividends, uh, but obviously more, uh, more assets allow us to do more things. Main Street is a brand new program, a brand new initiative for us. The city is participating. Uh, this will go towards, you know, just our Main Street budget, which will allow us to do the things that we need to do in order for it to be successful long-term. And so for the Main Street program, that's where you're um, assisting new entrepreneurs to help them scale and grow then. Yeah, it's, you know, our lines blur blur a lot, which is probably why, you know, initially the city asked us to take on this role. We have three distinct roles, obviously the chamber, which is a membership association. The second being tourism, bringing visitors to our community, which benefits our, <laughs> our entire community, including our members. And now the third leg of that stool will be Main Street, uh, which will really be the entity, the enterprise, the organization that drives, you know, progress and, uh, you know, creates a framework, a structure for downtown, the downtown district, which in our case, we've defined as the river to 10th Street, Kansas to Maine. Okay. And with, so the notion, with the notion being that a strong, vibrant downtown benefits our entire community. And I've noticed that on the on the Facebook page, you guys are also um, asking for anyone that's an entrepreneur to come to the chamber and you'll help them. Um, is that something you're doing specifically also for anyone in Atchison County that would be a small business owner that needs some assistance? Yeah, we've rebranded uh, the gift shop to locally Atchison. So our we're, we're trying to drive local artists and makers uh, as opposed to some of the stuff that we had in the past, we're really trying to highlight and identify those artisans and makers that may need a, a spot, a, a place, you know, brick and mortar. Uh, they may not have an e-commerce site. So give them the opportunity to be exposed to new customers, new opportunities to test ideas, to see if, you know, they, or I think the end goal being that they, you know, become a legitimate business that's in our downtown, in our community somewhere, um, you know, adding to the tax base. So Jim, you and I had this kind of conversation about this some weeks ago. I believe that the $7,500 you're asking for Main Street is part of a wider community investment. I mean, the city- Significant would invest into it, the banks, whoever might be benefiting it would be a, a wide community investment. Am I still correct on that? Or? Absolutely. 
And we and we've is this, been a, is this a one time thing to get it kicked off, or is it something you're going to come back every year for? Oh, I'll come back and ask for more, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, this is a this is a, an opportunity for multiple stakeholders to participate. We are reaching out to the larger companies, some of which aren't even in the downtown district, but again, they recognize that a thriving uh, downtown is beneficial to the entire community and, and to their business, whether they're impacted directly or not. So yeah, we're, we, we will have a much wider um, ask across the area for 2022 beyond just uh, you know the city and yourselves. So that's a targeted area. What exactly are you providing for that 7,500? What's, what's I, I guess I'm missing, I know that's a target area, but can you say, expand a little bit more on that, what what you're doing for that area? Well, again, we'll be, we'll, we'll be the one-stop shop for all things downtown in partnership with the city and the county. But laying, you know, dealing with issues of organization design, promotion, and economic vitality. So we, we, there will be an economic development component to what it is we do. We'll also be promoting the district, which really dovetails with what we're doing from a tourism standpoint. We'll be engaged uh, with the city on design issues. So there, there's an extensive amount of work that will be done under the purview of, of Main Street that goes beyond a tactical decision that you know we're gonna do X, like a sidewalk or something like that. This is a long-term play that's much more strategic, much more comprehensive, and will go on for you know for the next I mean, Emporia is a Main Street that's been going for 24 years. So this this is a long-term play to address downtown and create a, again, a thriving local sustainable economy. So is this more brick and mortar stuff, design of buildings or, or is this design of uh, a, a way to market uh, more of a theme or a culture? I mean, that's kind of maybe more of my question or is it all the above? It's, you know, it's all, I mean, obviously placemaking, I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but placemaking is a, part of uh, a main street program creating that you know that distinguishable place that is identified i mean i think the goal for the city and the goal for you know the main street program will be when you're in downtown you'll know you're in downtown because of the way it looks and feels so there is a there is an element to placemaking there's also you know this the notion of you know economic vitality, economic development, and the mix of retail, the mix of businesses. One of the things that we'll do this year in our build up to uh, doing all of this will be to do an asset inventory of exactly what do we have in downtown. What 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 are the exact uses of every single building in downtown? Are there opportunities for housing above businesses what's the mix of businesses what's the you know what are we getting as far as sales tax leakage to other you know communities outside of our area so it, it's a again a really comprehensive strategic look at downtown that will have some things that we're executing on a day-to-day -day basis that will you know that'll be self-evident when they're done i mean our, our first big kickoff will be um to main street will be a Commercial Street Block Party in July, uh, which will be under the under the guise of the uh, the chamber in locally Atchison Main Street. Does that that help at all? Yeah, I'm trying to just understand it. I, I've you know just for the for the extra amount. So. Well, it's a new initiative that we are undertaking that is probably one of the most consequential things that we will do over the next decade or more. So Jim, as far as the retailing, you need to have the right mix of retailers. And you know that that's one of the things strategically you're gonna work on is having the right mix. But I would love to see more of our retailers selling 
online outside of at in Atchison and outside of Atchison. And that's an economic development question. Will that come under the Main Street umbrella? Did you say the, the online portion of it? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, any any retailer, any business that's not engaged in online e-commerce is missing a significant amount of uh, market potential. So absolutely. Any other questions? Not at this time. No, I outside of the Main Street program, I just I like to see what you guys have have done in the in the direction you're headed because I know that um, just encompassing everyone in Atchison County um, and the small businesses outside of the city of Atchison have utilized you and some of the farmers markets there at the depot and a lot of people are excited to see kind of how you're bringing everybody together. So appreciate that very much. Hey, Jim, I want to compliment you on something. Uh oh. When we had our county city meeting a month ago or so, and I, I hope everybody heard it, but I think you said in order to, for a town to be by, have good vitality, we need to be a community that works together. Yep. And, it, and we got to keep thinking about that when we look forward. Let's work together. And, as a community. And that's definitely what we're trying to do and accomplish with tourism is embracing the fact that we have a place that people want to visit and getting everyone on the same page. But you're right, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, um, you know, my experience, you know, in public life and working across neighborhoods in, in, a, in a larger city, but also my consulting work in a host of smaller communities. The one thing I've learned uh, that's absolute is that if a community is not on the same page if they're not you know going the same direction you're not working together you you may you may end up being able to survive um, but you'll never thrive and I think this community has the capacity the professional capacity to the folks in the right place to really seize on opportunities that we have in front of us and we have to do that together so absolutely Thank you for the compliment, and I think I'll retire after that. You know, I, so one of the big messages in the home office at Walmart is have a high have a high capacity for Mavericks because Mavericks are what make it happen, and we need to we need to encourage people in their entrepreneurship to be Mavericks. Thinking, I don't want to use that word. Think out of the box because it's an overused term, but. We need to have a real capacity for fabrics in our, in our uh, business thought process. Absolutely. And one of the things I will just uh, touch on one thing real quick, and I because I know you've got a full agenda, but and this may go to Commissioner Knowles' uh, issues as well. From an entrepreneurial ecosystem building standpoint, I mean, we're looking at doing education. I, we're, we're attempting to craft a mentorship program. We are blessed with some folks who have been extraordinarily successful that have the ability, the knowledge, the will to assist others. And I think we need to tap into that. We need to identify all of our partners. And then lastly, I, I would like us to replicate what has happened with the e-community e loan on our own terms, creating an innovation fund for entrepreneurs where we can encourage, Mr. Chairman, that that maverick attitude that, you know, I've been sitting on the sidelines, I've got this idea, I've got the passion, I just need the asset, I just need the, the access to capital. So if we address all of those things, then we can start to build, you know, what we have talked about, which is, again, the sustainable local economy that will thrive long term. Anything else? I have nothing. Hey, Jim, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Tiffany. Uh, Steve Kaplan. Steve Kaplan. Oh, Steve Kaplan. I'm sorry, Steve. There, can you hear Steve, me? You're on whenever you're ready. Okay, well. And I'm sorry not to call you right away, but my, I need glasses, but I didn't put them on. <laughs> I don't have any speeches for you. I'm just uh, 
trying to be efficient use of time. I think I have put everything into my letter to you that um, that I felt like you probably needed to know. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Am I correct to assume that you're not paying any rent at the depot in Atchison? That's correct. Well, in, indirectly, we pay rent because we were assigned a portion of the bed tax that's in the city of Atchison. And that is a that is assigned over to the city of Atchison and they use that to take care of us. I suspect that it doesn't cover the costs. Sure. Okay. I just, uh, I just want to make sure that was still in place. Yes, sir. Okay. I would say that I was in the museum for the first time in over a year recently. And boy, that thing is, has shined a lot. It's, I don't know if you're the one that gets credit, but it's really improved a lot. The actual physical space. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you I'm said. I'm just saying when I've been in there, the space at the museum has really improved. Uh, I, I, I hope so. We're, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, we've, we've been making a lot of effort trying to, uh, it's not something that you can do you know, wholesale all at one time, but we, we have a vision that we're uh, working on right now to try to change the layout of the museum in such a way that it, uh, due to some suggestions we've received from some of the old timers, try to put in something that um, has more of a chronological flow to it. And so what we're trying to do is um, work on the history of our part of the state, our county, that goes from, you know, from the very beginning all the way up to the front and uh, um, trying to make it flow as you walk through. We're. Oh, it cows. <laughs> what was that? Did a, we got a cow get loose? <laughs> that sounds like it. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, it looks better to you. I'm, I'm hoping it will look better. We, uh, we did, as I mentioned in my letter, receive a grant from uh, the Courtney Turner Trust to help us remodel our, um, our workspace. We're trying to develop a, um, a research library where, and digitize our collection in such a way that we can get it organized that will help people who are routinely calling us, um, looking for information about our community and you know, family history, all manner of things. We, we get calls from many different organizations asking us for background information, uh, such as MoCam development. You know, they, they call occasionally uh, looking for information about the community, to, I suppose, to help in um, writing some of the grants that they write for people. Um, a lot of family history type questions. Um, questions from students at BC who are working on history projects. Um, it's, um, we get calls from all over the country. Uh, railroad uh, people who will call and ask us for specific information about uh, railroad history here in Natchison. It's um, quite a wide variety of, of people that we have call the museum, the society, uh, looking for help. We're trying to meet that need, although, you know, what we're doing is strictly with a team of volunteers. And um, I don't think that one could walk into our uh, library or our uh, collection and say that we really have this thing uh, organized. And I feel really inadequate to help people at times. And so we're, we're aiming towards developing that library and trying to make all of our collection as uh, useful to people as possible so that it's searchable on a computer. We have hopes of maybe even putting it on a cloud uh, so that um, it's available um, for people who are, can't get out because of uh, pandemics and such things. Um, it, it, that I think the pandemic caused a lot of questions. People sitting around the house not knowing what to do, so they call us. <laughs> I've been had the pleasure of speaking with Steve many times this last year and 
since he's kind of been ramrodding it down there and sounds like he's doing a lot of work. Uh, the scanning project sounds like that it alone was uh, quite labor intensive. Uh, that's where a lot of these photos that showed up on Facebook and I think have come through as they ran across different treasures that they've, they've located uh, that were lurking in boxes in the closets and things that hadn't been organized for years. So I want to congratulate him and thank him for doing all that work. Uh, I got a question. Uh, you had also mentioned recently that you've been approached about taking over the railroad portion of the uh, or the assets of the railroaders. Is that correct? And what would that mean in the future for historical society and funding and everything? Well, the um, the Northeast Kansas Railroad Club um, a few years ago, I think maybe around could be five years ago. Um, uh, gave their um, most of their assets, which is the rolling stock and the uh, and the real estate that it sits on. Uh, they gave that to the Chamber of Commerce. I think that that was uh, for the intention of developing a tourist um, uh, destination. Uh, the the Chamber's direction has moved from not wanting to be uh, part of that project, and we are a um, a logical organization to be the recipient of such a project, although it does scare me a little bit um, as I look at it. Um, we've been studying the implications of accepting this from the chamber and um, we have the desire to accept it. We're just trying to figure out monetarily what kind of, of a commitment that's going to take and when it comes to money, our organization is not, we're not prepared for that kind of an expenditure. Now, if we were to take on that responsibility and the expectations of the community were that we did nothing more than just let it sit there, um, we can handle that. Um, but to, to change it into something where uh, th those assets are not deteriorating in their condition. Um, we need to do some improvements, uh, like to the engine and the tender. Uh, there's some contingent liabilities associated with these assets. Um, there's some asbestos uh, that's on the engine that needs to be mitigated, uh, problem solved. Uh, there is a tender that is um, has a very large quantity of oil in it that could be a potential, you know, if it ever sprung a leak, uh, it could be a big problem, uh, probably needs to be offloaded. So we have a lot of issues like that that we need to study and we need to put some numbers to. So we're really not at this point in time ready to say, yeah, um, do the paperwork and give it to us. Uh, we're trying to study it right now. I've been working uh, closely with Jim at the chamber, um, trying to figure out what to do with it, how to handle it. I think the only way that we're going to be able to really do anything more than what the chamber is doing now is if we can uh, come up with a funding source that will help us at least get it in a stable condition. It's not part of um, anything that I'm requesting from you today, it, but it is something that in the future I, I don't think we'll be able to go forward with it unless we're going to get uh, a large um, public and private uh, commitment, you know, for money to actually solve the problems. I mean, the engine is sinking. Um, I'm sure that the ties that are underneath it are getting older and that engine's heavy and um, the wheels are now uh, where they touch the rails, um, the rails are not visible any longer. Um, so, I mean, we're probably looking at some track repair that will come up in a few years. Uh, it's kind of scary, you know. Uh, Get your handy contract. main jack and we'll raise it up and put some bricks under. Yeah. Well, we were just recently donated a, uh, a railroad jack that might um, help. Is there anything like through Santa Fe or, or railroads like that that would 
possibly be grants or historic uh, historical grants to somebody like that for a funder? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at all of those things. Um, we're going to have to, I mean, I hate to go out and ask for a grant for something that we don't own. Uh, but yeah, if we if we take on that responsibility, that's definitely where we're going to have to go because I'm pretty certain. I don't know. I might you might surprise me, but I doubt if the county would want to give me a couple million dollars to help solve this problem. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could have a a special sales tax, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> He's pushing the hot buttons. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm, I'm blessed right now that I've got um, several volunteers that are helping at the museum, particularly with the, uh, um, the scanning. Um, Mrs. Greenwood and Ms. Harden are just working their little tushies off, scanning stuff. Um, uh, right now, the, the scanning is probably going at a rate of about between 10 and 15,000 a week. And um, they, they told me that it was their goal that by the end of June, we would be done with the, the cache of globe negatives that we inherited. And um, so once they're all scanned, and then we have to go through the process of identifying all of them and so that they can be searched. And that probably will take longer than the scanning. Sure. But we, and we have a lot of stuff that we want to digitize. If something would ever happen to that building, you know, a tornado, a fire, uh, you know, who knows what, you know, all that information is lost. We want to get it in a condition and stored where it, it's always going to be there for posterity. And also make it to where it's a lot more enjoyable for people. As, as you can tell from our the budget I put together, I mean, we I I probably didn't allude to that in my presentation, but we've been really negatively cash flowing for a, a few years. And um, and we are going through our collection trying to find those items that we're storing that don't have anything to do with Atchison County history. And so we're identifying those objects and, um, and artifacts and we're deassessing them and trying to find a home for them. Number one priority is, is that we, we find another museum where they're more appropriate and pass that on to them. If it's not something that is uh, suitable for another museum, um, we're going to monetize them, take that money and try to put it back into our endowment fund so that it can support our budget in, in future years uh, with dividend income that we're receiving from our stock portfolio. Um, many years ago, we were given a, a quite a few large gifts that started the endowment fund. And those are, those are, um, subsidizing our operation you know through that dividend income that's part of the budget that you see and you see an item in there where we're uh, talking about putting money into the endowment fund that would be coming from the sale of those non-mission assets that um, that will be monetized we don't want to sell we don't want to sell an asset and have it used for operational expenses. That doesn't seem appropriate. So what we're going to do is we have drawn too much money in past years out of that endowment. And what we want to try to do is put that money back uh, from the sale of these assets. Any other questions or questions? Um, so I have a few questions just because I'm trying to understand. So I thought that Atchison County Historical Society was pure volunteer based. Um, so you are, your museum's located at the depot, but you don't, you don't have rent, but you have, is, is it correct that that's considered the North building for expenses? The building's owned by the city. Right. 
we are given, um, there is a portion of the bed tax that is to um, fund, um, that's to fund the, the depot. That money doesn't come directly to us and then we pay rent to the city. We assigned that income to the city and they take care of all the expenses for the utilities, the maintenance of the building. I think uh, yeah, Casey was asking about the North building. Yeah, Isn't that, that the building oh. by the uh, senior, senior village? village? Oh, okay. The senior village, that is our responsibility. We, um, we own that building and we maintain it. East of senior village. Oh. oh, okay. So yeah, because I was looking at um, the mowing and utilities part and I was just trying to wrap my head around. So you have stuff stored at another building? Yes, we do. Artifacts and that kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay. Otherwise then, known as Fibber McGee's closet. <laughs> gotcha. I didn't see. I didn't know that. I'm learning something. And then, um, so what does our contribution from the county go towards for, for your organization? general operation. Okay. And then as far as the, um, is someone manning the museum? Is that what the payroll expenses? Or is the board, I guess I'm just trying to understand because I thought it was, I didn't know that, I thought it was all volunteer based. It is. Okay. It, it is all volunteer. Um, on the, um, on the payroll, let me look at the document you're looking at here. Um, it just shows payroll expenses of 10,000. It, it shows an item of $10,000. Yes, sir. And that is a, um, a flow through uh, income and expense. So up under grants, we have a, we're, we're assuming that this coming year, we're gonna receive that same grant. Um, we are sharing an archivist with the Amelia Earhart Hangar Museum, and we're receiving a gift of $10,000 that is um, from an individual that is, um, and we're getting about one fifth of her time to help us with our organizational difficulties. And so she spends one fifth of her time with the museum and we give that $10,000 back then to the AE Hangar Museum. So that way uh, they handle all of the payroll process, payroll taxes and all of those items um, through their payroll. So we get a gift from an individual, then we turn around and give that 10,000 to the AE Hangar Museum and they, they handle the payroll for that person with one check. Okay. So it's a flow through, it's a break even deal. If it was not for the gift of the 10,000 that we received, we would not be, we would not have that payroll expense that shows there, and it's a wash. Gotcha. Okay, thank you for explaining that. Well, I know it's, it's, when you just look at a table full of numbers, sometimes things just don't match. Well, and I read about the Amelia Earhart Museum um, and the gal's name that's helping, but I didn't realize that's what that was for. If, if, if it was not for the, the donations that we're receiving, we'd be, we'd be upside down. And, if, and the money we get from the county is the only stable source of money that, um, that we receive because all those numbers that you see there on the income side that are, um, that are part of the you know, donations and what happens at the, you know, the donations at the door that people leave for us, um, you know, that's all terribly variable. And um, it's so what we receive from the city in the form of facility and what we receive from the county is what basically takes care of the bare necessities to keep the organization going. It's through our hard work and uh, 
in stewardship that we're able to make things happen. And from, from the donations we're able to solicit that to end up being the things that enhance what our mission is. Do you, do you guys have a grant writer that you use? Because I see you get income from grants. I am the grant writer. Oh, nice. <laughs> we might need to talk after this meeting about the possibilities uh, there too. <laughs> uh, no. I, I, if it wasn't for the, you know, the grants that we're receiving are coming from people in our community that, that are, um, that have been long supporters of our organization. Without them, uh, the museum would not exist. So it, uh, you don't have to be too tricky of a grant writer when you already have people who want to help you. So I'm not good at grant writing and um, I'd be tickled to death to pass on that responsibility to somebody else. I'm not retired yet. You got too many jobs. Retired. I would like to thank you for the good reporting because I understand the museum and the historical society much better today than I ever said in the last four years. So. Yeah. yeah, thank you for thank you, explaining that. Well, if if I wasn't if I wasn't clear, I just want to make sure that I'm you know what I'm asking for. Uh, you're asking for ten thousand dollars. Yes. As Can long we get that message? That's what I'm asking for, and I, I really don't think it's too much. I, I understand the, you know, the concerns that we all have to try to keep costs down for the taxpayer. But when you, when you look at, at the expense, uh, you know, to, to the county, or let's say ten thousand dollars, and we're talking about less than a dollar for every man, woman, and child in the county, and I think that we're giving a whole lot more value than that back to them uh, that they receive in a roundabout way. Today, I, I spent three hours this morning with um, um, a group of fifth graders from ACES. And um, we had a lot of fun. We went out to the mud hut at, by the bridge to nowhere. And um, we um, had a good time out there. And I, I hope they learned something. We came back to the museum and spent a couple hours there and we talked a lot about uh, many, many topics and they had good questions and uh, I felt like it was, I hope it was as much fun for them as it was for me because I uh, really enjoyed myself and, and being able to disseminate local history and try to develop an appreciation for what it is that we have here and the, the all of those productive things that happened in, in this part of Kansas that um, made Kansas what it is today. This is an important place in a, in a historical uh, perspective. I think you're doing a good job, Steve. Yeah, thanks, thank thanks you. Thanks for coming on, Steve. Thank you for your time. Look at me. Good afternoon. Oh. I have, if you, I have a, the packet that you have seen there, um, a couple of things that I wanted to address for with you, just in case you had a couple questions, was on the um, budget for our operations fund. Um, you'll look, there was, there's quite a significant change from actual to 20 down under DOC technician. Um, which was an expenditure in 20. And then for our current estimated year of 21, you see nothing. That is due to, we no longer have a DOC technician as a conservation district. Um, that position right now is vacant. We have a partnership with NRCS with being in the office and we have an NRCS technician. So the need for a DOC technician right now isn't um, needed. Um, until we need one, we won't have money coming into the county for that DOC technician. So that 17,291 that you see was spent was an expenditure that we gave back to DOC since we lost that position. They give us the money upfront. When we don't have that payroll going out, we have to give that money back. So we don't foresee a DOC technician 
for 2021. Later down the road, we may see that coming back, but right now we don't have that. Um, that was the biggest. Um, also on, your, on the mill levy, we're kind of, as a district, we're the go-between between the Henry Pole um, and I think it's Highfield levy that they had some repairs. That money comes to the district. We issue it to the Army of Corps Engineers and it's a wash. It's just a, you, a individual can't pay the Army of Corps Engineers. So we're like the sponsoring agent. So you'll see that there's no money coming in in 2021 or an expense because we won't have that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And then you'll see on the, um, just our cost share programs report, just kind of gives you an idea of what the money came in um, that went back into the ground due to our cost share, our water resources program. That money uh, comes in from the state, the Department of Conservation, and then the district goes through the applications that we get in and we rank them to make it fair based on a criteria. And then we give that back to the producer so they can get some projects in the ground. So the water resources is like your tile outlet terraces, um, some sediment basins. So that's what we put back in in 20. And then um, actually I'd say 2021 because we work on fiscal year 2021 right now. We're getting ready to go to fiscal year 22. And then our non-point source is your septic systems. We did have an additional allocation of 30,000 that we got towards the end of the year um, that DOC sent us out an email saying, do you guys have some projects that need to be done? So we went through some outstanding applications that we haven't been able to fund and we're able to go ahead and put 30,000 back into the county. Do you have any questions, clarifications? I'm happy to answer anything. Um, I have a few questions. Um, one is if you could just kind of give a general overview to the public as far as what the conservation district does in Atchison County. Um, and then I'll, I can ask my specific questions based on the packet, just for people that aren't familiar with it. Um, I think it's good to just understand that. Uh -huh. We um, work with, we're partnered with NRCS, which is the National Research Conservation, their government entity. And we work with them along with the producers um, within our county. And we have cost share programs that um, give money back to help producers, farmers get um, erosion and control, erosion under control throughout the farmland in the county. So we have our cost share programs through the state, which is the state of Kansas Department of Conservation that we get funding every year from to help those producers. Um, they pay 50% of the, the projects and then we come in and pay a 50% as well. We're kind of the funding agent between it. They give us the money and then we work it, put it back in the county. Um, so that's kind of like an over general of kind of what we do. We also work with schools. Um, and producers to, to educate them on farming and, and what, you know, what we do or how important it is. We do a poster contest um, every year with the schools in the county um, just to educate the young children so they can understand it as growing up and it's something they wanna do later. They have an education of what it is. It's just a small, and the kids love the, the poster contest. It's something they look forward to every year. Um, when I first started, we were getting maybe 30 posters, and now we have over 200 entries every year. So it, it's, it, I love to see the kids and the excitement that, that it brings to them. And the teacher always gives me feedback from when she's worked with the kids, how excited they are about the, the contest that's coming up. Um, we've also held a couple field days for our producers just to give them some information. Cover crops are becoming very popular in the county. Um, and so we held a cover crop workshop just to kind of give people a little bit more education if that is something that they choose to do. Thank you. 
On the operations fund budget, I saw that the um, the state matching funds could be as high as twenty five thousand. Is that mm -hmm. something that shortchanged because of our contribution, or what? Do you know what that apportionment is? I was just wondering if, because I saw it has it give a little bit more. Yeah, no, it's kind of basically where we're located at in the okay. county or within the state. Is kind of how they do that, where the needs are at. Okay. I was just curious about that. And then um, I didn't realize, I guess, that the non-point source was for failing wastewater systems too. So is that an application process? And do you work with um, like Northeast Kansas Environmental out of Troy or how, yes. how does that work? Can you just explain that? Because I know yes, that's an that's issue in Atchison County for several people. So a better understanding that I think would be helpful. Okay. Yeah, we do septic failing septic systems. They have to be failing and deemed by Department of Environmental Services. We do work with them. Uh, we let them know, as well as the landowner, and they go out and do a um, inspection and issue a permit. And then that's when we can get the ball rolling. Um, then we work with the Department of DSC, the Department of Conservation to get a contract in place. Now there is a little bit, and I say a little, a criteria that they have to meet for getting funding because funding is limited based on what we're allowed. Like I believe our non-point source is roughly like 14,000, 15,000, just kind of base, just kind of depends on the year of what we get. That, and we have a landowner limit of $3,000. Okay. So we can only fund up to 3,000. So we, we do do a criteria just so one, we make it fair for everyone as best that we can, but it's, you know, if that's if it's close to, um, there's a body of water that's used for human consumption. We don't want that spilling into that body of water. So then that, that helps get them the septic and the extra help from us. And that's when Logan comes out from the Department of Environmental Services and helps with that as well. Yes. Awesome, thank you. Tiffany, I have one observation. Maybe I shouldn't point it out, but I noticed last year when we had you had your uh, soil conservation uh, meeting, and you had the pamphlet mm -hmm. and, and the thank yous and and uh, the acknowledgments on for for funders and people that volunteered presence and things. And I noticed the county wasn't on that. Yet. <laughs> Uh, I just in future. I mean, you know, I, Eric, I, that's that's a very good point. Um, and I mean, that I, is a very good point. I mean, it's. It, I think we need to be on there because I mean, we are a major funder for these programs, and and I think uh, it's not that I want recognition, but I mean, I think the the county taxpayers need the recognition. So I would like to see that in the future. Nope, absolutely. That's a very good point, Eric. And I'm glad you pointed that out because we we focused on more the annual meeting aspect of it uh, for the thank yous and the donations for that meeting. But we're also talking about the year as a whole. So we need to talk about our, you know, our donations that come as a whole throughout the year. So no, I, I greatly appreciate you pointing that out and we'll make sure that that happens in the future. Sorry, I have a couple other questions. Because I was yes. reading, th I was reading through, um, so in Atchison County, our goods, are we able to come to the conservation district um, to purchase the grass seed and trees like in some districts? Does our district offer that? Yes, we do. Okay. Trees, we kind of push off to our forester that we have that works with NRCS, but we're help, happy to help anyone if they have any questions with trees. If we can't help them, we will help, we will push them in the, in the direction of our forester, which he's located in Jefferson County but he's very knowledgeable and very helpful as well. But grass seed, yes, we do order that seed in um, and can have it here within a couple of days. Okay, great. And then as far as equipment rental, are we mm -hmm. doing all of the, the grass drills and the no-till seeders and all of those, or what do we have to offer in Atchison County? We have a no-till, um, we have a good drill that we have right now. Um, you'll notice um, our, our enterprise fund on that second sheet is, um, you'll notice some expenses there for equipment and building maintenance, or quilt, excuse me, equipment and building maintenance. 
Uh -huh. um, we just got the new grass drill. So we have a 2019 model. We just got a new one. We're, the, the districts actually wants to purchase another piece of equipment. They're just not sure what they wanna do that, whether it's another grass drill, a manure spreader. We used to have a scraper, but it was only getting utilized within the two and a half years that I was here, we have made $500 off of it. So it just really wasn't servicing the mm -hmm. county. Okay. that we decided to get rid of it. We just, we're, we've been reaching out actually in our newsletter, annual report, we asked producers like, what would you like to see us purchase? That's gonna benefit you. Didn't get a lot of feedback, which, you know, not surprised by that. It's, you know, it's not something that's hugely important until you need it. Then you're like, oh darn it, I wish I would have said that. But we have put it back on the agenda. Actually just had a meeting this morning and it's back on the agenda for next month that we will be purchasing another piece of equipment. Just don't know what that is yet. But we do have the, we will have at least two pieces of equipment available. Yes, for rent. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Christy? That's all I have. That's hey, right. thanks a lot, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate your time. Okay. I got one more item under uh, new business. It's not listed here, but I have a contract for grant writing services for Atchison County, the South Central Kansas Economic Development. It calls for $75 an hour. My understanding from her presentation that they expect it to be 20 to 25 hours. And from $1,500 to $17,500 cost for the grant writing service. $1,750 was the cap. Yeah, okay. yep. or cap of 17. Okay, yep. this is the presentation we had last week. Um, yes, for the CDBG. And we will round receive, three. If, if we're successful, we receive money for to help our small businesses yep. inside of Atchison County. Outside of the city of Atchison. Oh, and, it has to be outside the city. And that. the reason that is, is because the city of Atchison won round one grant. So based on the rules within the grant application, she double checked. And so it'll have to be businesses outside, outside of so the city of Atchison. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And that's not our rules. That's the rules of the grant. Sure. Um, sure. And so, and the max amount was 150,000 with, her services coming out of it. So it leaves right around $130,000 roughly to be able to be distributed to uh, small businesses in Atchison County. So she's gonna help us come up with that application process so we can get the word out to our small businesses. That way we have 90 days to distribute. So we need it. We need to know kind of a game plan ahead of time. So. Okay, yeah. so the chair would entertain a motion to uh, authorize the chairman to sign this contract in for Atchison County. Awesome. Uh, the motions moved by Mr. Noel. Well, second. Second by Commissioner Quinn. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I said you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Uh, Patrick Henderson. Do, I don't think we have any older unfinished business. No, I just wanted to say real quick, a shout out. Justin Prejean is who turned us on to them and let us know about the eligibility of that. So yeah, he's good at finding things. Yeah, it's, I very much appreciate yeah, we that have a connection. Lot, we, we can do a lot of thank you to, for Justin. Yeah. Yes, I do. First of all, I think he gets works for the county very well. Okay, um, Pat Henderson. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything to add. Okay, so um, we have a agreement oh, to purchase right away. I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is for uh, I don't remember which bridge. I think it's on there. But anyway, one of the bridges it's going to require we take down a fence, and in the normal way that we do things when we purchase an option, which is what we typically do. Um, that's included in there in that we will put the property back in the same condition that it was in prior to the uh, prior to the project. Um, because we already have the legal descriptions for the uh, for the easements, it wasn't necessary to purchase that option. Uh, but the landowner 
we're still desiring to have that uh, contractually ob that contractual obligation. And it can't go in the easement because the landowner is going and assigns the easement. So that's the purpose of uh, of that agreement. The easements are uh, that have been agreed and the price negotiated. And well, as you can see there, it's just uh, it's just two hundred dollars for them. Uh, but that does need to be uh, need to be done as a condition proceeding to executing the easements was the county's commitment to put the property back in or put the fence back in the same condition it was in prior to the project. So the chair would entertain a motion to allow the county, is it determined to sign on behalf of the county um, for um, a permanent right of way easement and a temporary construction easement? For the construction, uh, and that's a two hundred dollar cost. Pat? Well, that is, but the other obligation that's in there is to put the property back in the same condition as prior, and that's um, we won't know that cost until the project's done. Well, I, well, I have a, a motion. Also moved. Moved by Commissioner Knoll. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Flynn. Discussion. Hearing that, I assume you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay. Anything else, Pat? Um, no. I, I have something. Uh, and I know Pat, you'd be involved in this. Uh, we had gotten an email back from Martha at NEKES about the sanitation codes and wondering where we were on that process. And I know we hadn't explored it since she was here talked about it i didn't know whether we wanted to have that as a talking point next week or how we're going to uh, proceed on that or what we want to do we could i do have uh, several comments on that that i have not shared with them uh but i should probably do that but sure that yeah it should be on the agenda yeah let's, let's get on into the workshop too Pat. and that'll give you a week to get with yeah. them if you need to yeah. uh, uh share ask some questions and uh, I think it's one of those things that it's kind of on the radar, but it's going to, with the budget state thing, it's another thing that's going to get uh, pushed back. So I just thought of that a couple of years ago. Um, at least give her an answer. Any uh, need for a uh, executive session? So, um, public comment. Anybody from the public want to comment? Well, let's see, none. Chairman entertain a motion to adjourn at 2.33 p.m. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Flynn, second by Commissioner Lowell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.